Hi, I'm D-Man from Hidden Hand Puppets. Today I'll be doing a tutorial on blinking eye mechanisms for puppets. These can be upscaled to use in fursuits or any other creation or creature you like, and can also be made out of a wide variety of different materials. So what I'm using in this tutorial is just what I had on hand. It was a bit of scrap EVA foam, as well as uh, I think an old Christmas bauble and some of my puppet rod material, which is mild steel rod, a 2.4 millimeter with a copper coating. I generally use these for my hand rods as well as the blinking eye mechanisms which I have in another tutorial. But for now we'll do the uh, stationary blinking eye mechanism. So I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. I'm always open for more comments and feedback and don't forget if you do like what you see and you want to support the channel please like, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can always be updated with all my new videos coming out. So as you can see here, I've got myself a Christmas bauble and some EVA floor mat. What I'm going to do now is make sure that I can secure the eyeball to the EVA floor mat. So I've made an indentation to show where I want the ball to sit. And I'm cutting in a slightly scalloped circle. And this will allow the bauble or the Christmas ball to sit snugly in there. So you only want to just hold just enough of the eyeball in there so that way we're not taking up too much of the exposed area of the eye. So my glue of choice is contact cement. You only need a very thin coating both on each part that you are gluing together. So I use a squeezy bottle with a slanted cut nozzle. This I find works well for my style of crafting and puppet building. And I use a bit of off cut EVA floor mat foam with a tapered angle just to help uh, spread around the glue and keep it neat and tidy. So you can see here, I've got two small off-cut bits. They're gonna sit either side of the eyeball. Now these are gonna be used as support for the axis. I also made up a very quick eyelid out of three mil high density EVA foam. And I took the pattern straight from the eye, uh, the bauble itself. Now what I forgot to do was put in the extensions on the pattern to create the hinge or axis points. So I've added some six mil EVA high density foam on there and that'll actually become the pivot points for the eyelid itself. So what I'm doing here is just running the rod through the um, openings I made up just to make sure that it can slide and twist as easy as possible. So depending on what you're using in materials, the concept is still pretty much the same. We want a stationary eyeball and we want to be able to allow that eyelid to move. So like I said, this is a very basic and very quick tutorial using some scrap material that I had laying on hand. So I use the rod to help line up where I want the eyeball to sit. And that way it shows me whereabouts that rod will sit when it goes through the supports on either side. So now I'm just measuring up the spacing I need between the eyelid and the support structure. Now you notice I sit the support structure back from the eyeball a bit, so I'm trying to imagine where it's going to sit if it was an actual puppet, and I'd like to see that eyeball sit as far forward as possible. But we still need enough material to create that support. So now I'm just marking out where I need to glue. And just quick uh, pen on EVA foam, uh, black EVA foam, black pen, so you don't see it as much. Then again, if you're covering it with fur or fleece, then you won't see it at all anyway, but it does help to keep um, the materials down. So again, applying a thin coat of contact cement to both pieces that you're gonna to glue together. And with that, you wait till they're both touch dry, so almost that they're completely dry, and then you'll bond them together by pressing them firmly towards each other and that'll create a very, very strong bond. Uh, generally, the only way you can get the bond separated again after that is by gently heating it or using uh, something like acetone, but that would generally eat away the foam as well. So heat is your best choice. If you need to make adjustments or if you've made a mistake, uh, heat gun, as long as you're not holding it too close and for too long, so you don't heat the EVA foam itself, but that'll generally warm up the glue enough to gently peel it away without causing too much if any damage. So I'm just letting them sit for a bit. So 
And just remember to place your lids back on your glue so they don't dry out. Alright, so that should be dry enough to tack now. So I'm just going to place it down within the markings that I've created. Press them firmly to make sure the bond is secure. So there we are. We have the support structure either side of our eyeball. So they are very basic in their functionality. So all we're doing is providing the bare basic necessities for it. Now if you're using an animatronic eye or a very small space, then your mechanics are going to be different. And I'll go over that towards the end of this tutorial. So right now I'm marking up the height that the pivot needs to go through, the uh, mild steel rod. So I know that my Christmas bauble is 60 millimeters or six centimeters. So three centimeters or 30 millimeters up on that EVA foam block is where I want to make my mark. And I did eyeball this to find how far in. So just make sure that you do, make sure your measurements are pretty close because you can uh, fumble it up at this point. And again, because it's all together, I'm just gonna push the rod through. And once it's through both sides, it then makes a mark on the other side of our support. And then if you can, if you want, you can just literally push it right through the foam. As I did in this one, I just pushed it into the foam. So it didn't actually come out the other side. But again, depending on how you're operating the mechanism, this may have to go through both sides. And now we're going to fit it all together and see how it works. So there's a closer look. So now we're going to place it all together now, taking time not to damage anything, making sure it all lines up. And then we'll give it a test run to see how it works. The great thing about EVA foam is the fact that it is bendable and pliable. So you can bend it out the way a bit to see what you're doing. And it does have a fair bit of leniency. Also with EVA foam, if you do heat it up and bend it over a form or a shape, once it cools down, it will hold that shape quite well. So as you can see here now, we've got the eyeball held firmly in place on the bottom plate or platform. And then the eyelid sitting on the pivot. Now I'm pretty sure I had this on back to front, which is why you can see it sticking at the front of the eyeball. So I do take this off and switch it around. So again, you can use many materials to make these out of. You can use wood, you can use metal, uh, EVA foam, wooden dowel. Uh, for the eyelids themselves, you can use plastic bowls or again, another half of a Christmas bauble. But generally you want it slightly larger than the eye itself. Um, in my other tutorial, you notice that we just use wire and then we attach the fleece or the material to the wire directly. So as you can see here now, the pivot all the way to the front. Uh, I found it a bit too tight, so I've cut a slit in the back just to create a less friction. Uh, like I said, it was a quick model of the Christmas bauble, but you can see here now it moves a bit more freely. So now we're gonna move on to creating the control arm for the eyelid. So this one here will be controlled at the rear of the eyelid. Generally, depending on the design of your puppet and how it's going to be engaged and used would be determinant on where your control arm would sit. So for the purpose of the tutorial, it's easier for me to put it at the rear of the eye. You can then sit it at the side of the eye. You can have it on the control arm itself or the pivot arm. And now have the pivot turn both eyelids.
uh, by putting it on each individual eyelid though you do give a bit greater control over to individual use of the eyelids or you can still sync them up by using a controller rod that connects both of them so again a little bit of contact cement on both areas that you're going to be joining together letting it air dry and then pressing firmly together so I did take a bit of care here because I didn't want to glue my controller arm to the eyeball itself otherwise it defeats the purpose of having a movable eyelid so if you are doing this or making an adjustment I, th I think um, it would be better to take it off of the eyeball and then make your adjustment but again I was using a bit of scrap material and it was about 1am after a 12 hour shift So here I'm just making some adjustments, you know, more in terms of aesthetics and how it should look. So what I'm doing here is I'm just creating an attachment point to actually operate the eye mechanism. Now you can use many things to operate the eyelid. Here I'm using 20 gauge wire. I'm just using it so I can demonstrate how the eyelid mechanism works. So I'm just bending a small loop at one end and then realized that it was going to be too small to fit through the thickness of the EVA frame and then I just enlarged it to make sure we could fit. So when making your eyelid or your mechanical blinking mechanism, you also have to take into consideration where your neutral point is or your resting point, whether you'd like the eyes to be closed or whether you'd like them to be open. And that will determine where you sit your uh, neutral position springs. So you could use elastic, you could use spring, anything with um, a spring motion to it. It is all you need to do. So as you can see here, I'm attaching the wire that will control it. So depending on the, on the design of your puppet, that can be controlled from above or below. You can even use cable, fishing line, uh, brake cable. But you can see the action there. So here is where I decided that the eye needed a pupil to give us a focal point. So just very quickly, I uh, just drew an eye, uh, a pupil on there, and then got a bit creative, and I decided uh, black wasn't just cutting it completely, so I decided to add a bit of colour to it as well. So now that we have a focal point, you'll notice here where the control arm is, this is where you would put the spring, and depending on where you'd like to so you have that neutral position, like we said before, the resting position, depending on where you would put that spring or the retraction. So if it was down, you'd probably put the spring underneath or have it attached to the bottom plate. And then if there was to stay in an open position or that return, you'd need to find a point above here's a bit closer look at the mechanism itself sorry about the autofocus you can see how the eyelid itself is pivoting on that rod there while the eyeball stays stationary on the eye plate so by looking at the mechanics you can then see you could place that arm on either side of the eyelid uh, you can look at harnessing points for your retention springs or your neutral springs but in general, this is the basic concept of how a blinking eye works for inside a puppet or any, any other idea that you could uh, use the mechanics for. So thank you very much for joining me on this tutorial. It is one of the first ones I've recorded, so I'm always open for feedback. And hopefully we'll see you for more in the future. Check out my social media pages, Hidden Hand Puppets, handmade for the hidden hand.